Hey guys and welcome to part 2 of the tutorial. Today, we will be making hiding spots functional. Last episode, we left off with the room with randomized hiding spots when open. However, the hiding spots don't do anything yet. First, we make updates to the hiding spot system. You might have realized that the top hiding spots aren't facing the right direction, so apply the point in direction minus 90 block to hiding spots 5 8. The hiding spots on the top are facing downwards now. Now, we need to make 8 variables. The variables are spot 1 type, spot to type. You get it all the way to spot 8 type. Once you are finished with the variables, you have to change this, if else, block into an if, block, and delete the delete this clone block. You see the index number for each of the hiding spots? Get one of the variables we made with the same number as the index number. You are going to make a block that is like, set spot index number type to constant number. So if the index number says 1, add, set spot 1 type to constant number. Do this for all 8 of the, if statements. Get an, if pick random 1 to 2 equals 2 then, lock and place it under each if statement. Under each, if, statement with the random block, add the corresponding, set spot index number type to 0, block, and add, delete this flow under it. Do this for every single, if, random statement. Now that the whole script is done, I'll show you the whole thing, in case that you got confused. That was the entire script. Make a new variable called, hiding, and copy down this script. What it does is make the character translucent when they enter a hiding spot, so they know that they're hiding. Now, you are going to make 8 new variables called, spot1 hiding, spot to hiding, all the way to spot8 hiding. I'm going to skip a while until I'm done with the script, then tell you how it works. Our script is done now. And what it does is that it detects if the x and y positions are between certain values, and changes the variable to either true or false, depending on the positions. Depending on the size of the hiding spots, you will need different numbers. Let me show you the script. And that's about it. Let me show you how to measure the positions correctly and change the numbers to have less bugs happening. So first, grab one of these blocks, set the spot when hiding to whatever hiding spot you are looking for. So first, you will try to get on the left edge of the hiding spot. Once you get there, Change the first number to the X position of the player. Now, go on the right edge of the hiding spot. Record the second number as the X position of the player. The last number will be the Y position of the player on the very top of the hiding spot. This number can be used for all the other hiding spots that are on the same Y position as them. One important thing about the last number, if the hiding spot is on the bottom of the screen, the comparer block must be a less than sign. If the hiding spot is on the top, it must be a greater than sign. Hiding will work incorrectly if you use the wrong symbol. As you can see, if we hide in spot 4 the bottom right, 
it will set the spot 4 hiding variable to true. If we go to spot 3 right next to it, it sets spot 3 hiding to true. If done correctly, this will set all the variables to their corresponding hiding spots when someone hides in them. Finally, make all the variables hidden, and all the hiding spots have a variable saying if someone is hiding in them, and a variable saying what type they are. This will be useful for hiding spot checkers. Thanks for watching.